Meanwhile, Buzz and his friends walked on through the night. At, as the sun rose, they saw a giant chicken in the horizon. Ayo, Stwebon, and Ray, we made it, they cheered, but between them and Toybon lay a busy street roaring with traffic. We have to get across, Buzz shouted. Are you crazy? Mr. Potato Head argued. You're not turning me into mashed potato. Just then, Buzz notified, noticed some traffic cones and got an idea. The toys pulled the traffic cones over their heads and that dashed into the street. Screech car swerves around the cones. Go, Buzz yelled. Just then, Mr. Potato Head's shoe got stuck in the wad of chewing gum. As he struggled to get free, a truck thundered past spinning a load of concrete pipes. The pipes rolled directly towards Mr. Potato Head. At the last second, he, ran, he yanked his shoe and ran. At last, the toys made it across the road. Good job, troops, Buzz said. Excellent convert, covert maneuvering. Let's keep moving. In the street, cars, trucks smashed each in, into each other, bounced off traffic barriers and knocked down street, street lights. But the toys hurried across the parking lot towards AI's toy barn, ignoring the honking horns and screeching brakes behind them. At the same time, the cleaner arrived at AI's apartment. Oh my, he muttered when he saw Woody. What a classic. Eagerly, the cleaner opened his amazing portable toy repair kit and set to work. Before long, Woody looked brand new. Your top-notch collectible quality now, the prospector said, after AI and the cleaner left. Yep, Woody answered, and I'm already ready to go home. Bullseye and Jesse watched sadly as Woody prepared to leave. You don't understand about Andy, Woody tried to explain. Yes, I do, Red, Jesse replied sulkily. I belong to a little girl once. She played with me one day until she grew up. Then I ended up in donations bo box. Even the greatest kids outgrow their toys. Woody couldn't believe what he was hearing. Could Andy actually outgrow Woody and give him away? Woody started believing he might really be better off in a museum after all. Meanwhile, Woody's pals were looking up at the hundreds of toy shelves that towered in front of them inside AI's toy barn. How will we ever find Woody in here? Rex whined. We'll split up and meet in the back. Buzz commanded. At, as his friends scattered, Buzz looked around. A green light glowed from a nearby aisle. Cautiously, Buzz approached. Before him stood an awesome display of featuring a new Buzz Lightyear, and the new Buzz was wearing an amazing utility pack complete with grappling hooks, string magnets, and magnetic redials, radials. I could use that, thought Buzz. Whap! Suddenly a hand clenched Buzz's. It was a new Buzz. Space Rangers are to remain in hypersleep until awakened by authorized personnel. You are breaking ranks, Ranger, new Buzz shouted. Let me tell you a secret, Buzz said, pulling away. You're not a space ranger, you're a toy. Ha! New Buzz yelled, tackling Buzz and throwing him to the floor. Their helmets crashed and their space boots thudded as the two space heroes clashed and tangled. Finally, new Buzz overpowered Buzz. He twist-tied Andy's toy into a box and crammed him on the shelf. Buzz was trapped. Meanwhile, in another region of AI Stwebon, Rex had stumbled upon a brand new Buzz Lightyear video game manual. Hey Buzz, Rex shouted as he and the others screened up on the new Buzz in his brand new sports car. I found a Buzz Lightyear video strategy manual and it reveals the secret of defeating Zerg. New Buzz jumped into the car. In these strange creatures, if these strange creatures knew how to defeat Zerg, new Buzz wanted to be with them. You've got it wrong, Buzz, shouted Andy Buzz, but no one heard him. When they reached AI's office, new Buzz led Andy's toys inside. AI was faxing pictures of Woody Roundup's toys 
talking on the phone uh, to his Japanese buyers. The toys crept across the office floor and sneaked into AI's open briefcase. I'll be on the last plane tonight with Sheriff Woody and the entire set, AI promised the buyers. Then he hung up, grabbed his briefcase and left the room. As Buzz raced after AI's car, he never noticed that behind him the evil Emperor Zerg, Buzz's arch enemy, stood in the doorway of AI's toy barn. The evil creature has broken free from his box and was now watching Buzz making his way to AI's apartment. As soon as AI crossed the street, he parked his car in the driveway and then rode the elevator up to his apartment. Much to their dismay, Andy's toys were left behind in the car. The toys quickly scrambled out of the car but had no idea how to get up to AI's apartment. Then New Buzz found a vent. Look, he called, we can climb through here. It's like a tunnel going to the top. New Buzz clamped the magnets from the utility pack onto the vent's material metal indoor interior and dropped a line down for the other toys. They began climbing. Luckily, an elevator rose behind them catching them on its roof. As the toys rode it to the top of the building, they didn't realize that their true pal Andy Buzz was clinging to the bottom. Crash! Using Rex as a ba battering ram, the toys smashed through the vent into AI's apartment and confronted the roundup toys. Just then, Andy Buzz burst into the room. Andy's toys gasped. They were there were two buzzers. Which one was their friend? As the others looked on confusion, Buzz lifted his shoe, revealing Andy's name on the bottom. Andy and his toys were shocked. They had been following the wrong buzz. Andy's buzz ran up to Woody. Let's go, he said. I can't buzz. Woody said, I'm part of a rare collectible set. If I leave, these guys will spend the rest of their lives in storage. And besides, one day Andy will just throw me away. Woody, listen, Buzz said, it's not about how long you lost, but how much fun you give your kid. It's not going good being a toy unless you're played with. But Woody wouldn't listen. At last, Buzz gave up and left. Then Woody, Woody saw the TV Woody singing in a grinning little boy to a grinning little boy and he realized how much he missed Andy. He knew he'd made a mistake. He decided to follow Buzz and Jesse and Bullseye decided to go with him. Buzz, wait, called Woody. Just then AI came in. He put the roundup toys in the case and headed for the elevator. Seeing this, Buzz ran through the vent, the other toys behind him and jumped on top of the elevator roof. But Zerg was already there, waiting for them. With an evil laugh, he attacked the two buzzers. I can't watch, said Rex, turning away. But as he did this, his tail swung around and knocked Zerg off, to the, roof, off the roof. Zerg was gone, but Woody still needed help. The toys peered through the roof into the elevator and saw AI standing behind Beside the case containing Woody, quickly the toys formed a long chain with Slinky at the end. Stretching his quill, Slinky managed to unlatch the case. But before he could grab his spell, the prospector yanked Woody out of reach. The elevator stopped and AI stepped out. Slinky dangled forlornly in mid-air. Then he crashed to the floor with his friends on top of him. I must stay here, new Buzz told his friends as they scrambled for the elevator. Goodbye and good luck. Warning, waving goodbye, and Andy's toys raced through the lobby doors, but AI's car was pulling away. How are we going to get Woody now, Rex wild? Mr. Potato Head smiled and pointed to a Pizza Planet truck idling nearby. Pizza anyone? He asked. With a cheer, the, choice, the toys clambered into the truck. Buzz climbed on top of the pile of pizza boxes to reach the steering wheel. Slink, the, pe the pedals, Rex, you navigate. Hmm, potato, operate the levers and knobs, he commanded. The truck's lights flashed, the gas hatch flapped, the antenna zoomed and the windshield wipers flipped, but the truck didn't move. 
Finally, Buzz yanked the gear ship. With a grinding noise, the truck lurched and swerved into the street. Pizza Planet The Pizza Planet truck zigzagged through the traffic and at last came to a shuddering halt beside the airport loading zone curb. AI was already hurrying into the terminal with his cases. Buzz glanced around the luggage loading zone and spotted a pet carry carrier near the terminal entrance. There's the perfect camouflage, he shouted. Let's go, troops. Moments later, the pet carrier scooted across the terminal, propelled by ten little toy legs. The ticket agent yanked AI's case from his hand and thumped it into the baggage conveyor belt. Quickly, the toys and the pet carrier jumped onto the conveyor belt behind AI's case. Inside the baggage area, the toys jumped from the pet carrier conveyor belt, sped past on every side, carrying thousands of bags, boxes, and suitcases. Finally, AI's toy carrying case seemed a hopeless task, but Buzz wasn't giving up. Split up and start looking. He told his, the others. Then he began running up and down the belts, finally spotting Woody on a belt above him. Buzz extended his wings and leapt towards his pal. When Buzz reached AI's case and opened it, the prospector leapt across and attacked him. He didn't want the Roundup toys to leave. He wanted them to stay as collectibles, not toys. Woody climbed up the conveyor belts to where Buzz and the prospector were fighting. Together, Woody and Buzz stuffed the, st the struggling prospector into a passing backpack. Buzz and Woody grinned at each other, but there was no... Time to waste. AI's case was speeding down the belt towards the outdoor baggage carrier. In a few minutes, it would be loaded onto the plane. We've got to get Bullseye and Jesse, Woody exclaimed. As he and Buzz tore down the conveyor belt, they saw Bullseye struggle from the case. But Jesse was still awake and still inside. Woody flung himself onto the bull's eye back, bull, pulled Buzz on behind him and raced after the baggage train. Whoa, Buzz yelled. I'm a space ranger, not a cowboy. Watch this, Buzz, Woody shouted as they galloped beside the train. I saw this on my television show. He balanced on bull's eye's back, gave a loud yahoo and leaped onto the speeding train. Scrambling along the tops of the bags, Woody searched for the case holding Jesse. Suddenly the baggage train pulled up behind, beside the plane and a baggage ha handler tossed AI's case into the cargo hold. I'm not letting Jesse down, Woody thought. She deserves another chance to play with a kid who loves her. He quickly jumped into a golf bag just before it was lo loaded onto the plane. Oh, Woody, you're here, Jessie exclaimed when Woody opened the case and helped her out. I'm so glad to see you. Follow me, Woody cried. We don't have much time left. He led Jessie through the cargo hold to escape hatch just over the plane's wheels. But the plane was already beginning to move into the runway. And as for the two toys uh, climbed down towards the wheel, Jessie slipped. Woody reached out to grab onto her when rip, his arm ripped. His grip grew weak and Jessie slipped from the edge of the escape hatch. She jangled an inches above the churning wheels. Sudden thinking quickly, Woody yanked his pull string as far as it would go and lassoed Jessie with it. At almost the same instant, Bullseye and Buzz galloped up to the wheels. Jump, Woody, jump, Buzz shouted. Holding Jesse tight and list with the last bit of strength in his arms, Woody jumped safely into Bullseye's back. Yee-haw, he cried as his pull string rewound. A short time later, Andy and his mum arrived home. What a baggage 
carrier doing parked on my street. Andy's mom wondered as she pulled into the driveway, but Andy was too glad to be back to Kay. Andy ran up the stairs and burst into the room and grabbed Woody on from the shelf. Howdy, partner, he exclaimed. Boy, did I miss you. Then Andy spotted Bullseye and Jesse lying beside a plate of cookies. A sign of etch a sketch said, Welcome at home, Andy. New toys, thanks, Mum, he shouted as he picked up Bullseye and Jesse. Then, to the delight, he began to play with them. The next day, as soon as Andy left the room, the toys held their own special party. Jesse and Bullseye were happy as could be. Not only were they together with Woody, but Annie loved playing with them. Even Wheezy was back with his voice completely restored. As for Woody and Buzz, they were just glad to be home in Annie's room, where a toy was guaranteed to have fun. Just playing. The end.